Green Central Catholic High School and our friends in Canada. It's so wonderful to be connected with you and to talk to you a little bit about the work of iconography and in particular the icon that we prepared, the two icons that we prepared for your high school, the uh, St. Joseph the Husband and Mary and St. Joseph the Worker. But before we get to that, it might be good just to know a little bit about the icons and why they are what they are and how we prepare the icons. So when we're preparing uh, the board for an icon, after we've saturated the wood with glue, we put a layer of linen on. That's also saturated with glue. It's usually old altar linens that, you know, for one reason or another are stained and can't be used for the altar anymore. And so we would, um, rather than burning them, we can use them for the icons. And it's a beautiful way of repeating, just as our Lord makes himself present uh, on the altar in the Eucharist and the celebration of, of the prayer of the people, uh, so too God makes himself present to us in things like uh, the icons. And so we have the linen glued on. Then we put layers of white gesso, which is basically crushed marble and rabbit skin glue. That's been applied. We applied this rather roughly just so you could see the glue and the gesso. There's a chicken screaming in the background producing an egg. And that's an important part of she's just on uh, code here because we paint with egg yolk. A lot of people wonder, well, what the heck are you gonna do with it? egg yolk? Uh, well, actually the whole icon, everything here has been painted with egg yolk that we have, um, oops, we've added pigments to. So this is iron oxide. It's a, a red uh, color that comes from the earth. You probably have it even around your high school. I don't know enough about Lethbridge to know if you have what kind of stones you have under your earth here, but that comes from the earth. All of our pigments that we use for painting your icon of, of St. Joseph, as well as all, I use a very small palette that includes things like titanium white, yellow ochre, uh, Prussian blue, all colors that come from either minerals or stones. Well, maybe mineral and stone is the same thing, I don't know. But in any case, um, we add the egg yolk to them, and whether you know it or not, egg yolk is a very durable medium. Uh, I oftentimes, I won't say this to you, but I have said it to some of my students that if you're not sure how durable egg yolk is, you throw it on a piece of metal, not on anyone's car or home, just on a piece of metal. You let that cure outside and you'll find that over time, usually a brief period of time, when you try to remove the egg yolk, you're not gonna be able to get it to come off that metal. You're, gonna, you're going to need a sandblaster or some really strong material to get the egg off of that metal. And for the most part, if you use a sandblaster, you're gonna to have to take the metal off with it. So then I'll apply a little bit of this red paint just to the edge of the board here. That's how we get the color to attach. That's our medium. The egg yolk is our medium, just like oil is the medium for uh, oil painting or acrylic plastics is the medium for acrylic painting. So egg yolk is the medium for egg tempera painting using all natural pigments to apply the color to the board. So there you have it. Now one thing I didn't mention, we also applied to your St. Joseph. If we look at, um, I have to turn this sideways just so I don't run the edge I just painted. If we look at your St. Saint, Saint Joseph the worker, 
this is an image of your icon before it was finished, you'll notice they also have round halos behind their head. Um, the, the halo was made with, with clay. We put a base of clay down as a bed to receive 23 karat gold. Then we took sheets of gold. I have some sheets right here. Come in these little packets. And so in this case it's called patent gold. That's 23 karat gold. And then we apply it to the clay that's put down at some point we'll have to give you a whole demonstration of all the processes but this is just so you know a little bit about how your icon was made after the gold is applied then we begin painting now of course we couldn't have begun painting if we didn't first have the drawing down and um so we did that first. Now you will notice, especially in this icon of St. Joseph, there isn't, there's not a whole lot of background work. If there was a background, it would look much like this work table does. You'll notice, if you're carefully observing the icon, that the table is getting bigger as it moves further away from you. Notice this side here is taller than this edge here. So we, we have in the icon a, a reverse perspective. When I look out the window there, now of course here in California, this part of California, we live in the mountains and the hills, so you can't really see the horizon. But if we were able to see the horizon, we would also know, and we're able to watch a road uh, disappearing off into the distance, we would call that the vanishing point. There's a certain point on the horizon where the road, the trees, the mountains, whatever it is that we're looking at, disappears. But even here in these mountain, this mountain region, we would note that the trees or a fence become smaller as it moves further away from us. Because when I look out that window, I'm looking into a world where everything is disappearing. I know maybe when you're in high school you don't remember this or you're not made aware of this, but you also are biologically disintegrating. We're all disappearing as far as our bodies are concerned and our material existence. But the icon is referring to another way of existing, eternal life where there is no biological disintegration. And so in the icon, we reverse the perspective. So rather than looking into a world where things are dying and disappearing, we're being looked upon by a world that is inviting us into life and into light. There's no light hitting your St. Joseph. There's no light hitting this, this icon is referred to as the face of Christ, not made with human hands. There's no um, shadowing. Uh, there's light equally coming out of each of the elements, the anatomical features of the face. The angels are all lit up. The cloth is all lit up. There's no external light hitting these objects. It's light radiating out of the icon and out of the persons in the icon because Christ says in John 8, 12, I am the light. And so when we go to heaven, God willing, we will become vessels of light, will be restored to our original likeness made in the image and likeness of God. And so the icons are giving us a great hope they're promising us that this is what we can become in the light of Christ. And so the St. Joseph icon will hopefully be a reminder to all of you, both of God's love, uh, who created us in his own likeness and created us to love and serve him. And uh, he in turn, uh, that is his love for us to put his love and his light and his mercy into us. 
the, the colors do play a very important role in an icon. Obviously, the whole, these are not, uh, these icons are not presenting Joseph, Mary, and Jesus as they existed in uh, Palestine 2,000 years ago or in um, maybe when they traveled through Egypt. This is presenting them as they dwell in heavenly light. So their clothing has symbolic value for us. Mary is dressed in blue with an outer red garment. Blue is usually a color uh, that communicates glory. She's called to a glorious role as a human person uh, who carries God in her body. So her title, you'll see it, it's not in this uh, part of the icon, but in your icon you see her title as Mother, what looks like an MP, and uh, an O and a Y with a squiggle. Mother Theotokos, the mother who carries God. So her clothing and her colors are telling us about her role in the world and her role in heaven. Uh, the red is normally a deep red that might suggest to us uh, heaven. It, sometimes people will say that Mary is dressed, her blue is the color of the earth, the sky, and the water and that her outer garment, uh, she takes on a divine work in carrying Christ in her body. Uh, but it's also probably appropriate to say that her red is normally kind of the, the color of blood because she gives blood to the mystery of the incarnation. And as you know, blood is blue inside of our bodies, and when it's oxygenated, then it becomes a deep maroon red. Christ is not dressed in the colors of a little baby in swaddling clothes. He's dressed as the king of glory. And he's a little bit funny looking. Most, uh, you know, babies don't look like adult adults in, he has the proportions of an adult but he, his size is that of a baby in relationship to his mother and foster father. Joseph is dressed in a very earthy brown color to remind us that he is indeed, uh, as all humans are, a man of the earth, a man, a, a hard-working man of the earth, a carpenter. His blue, though, suggests his connection also, like Mary's, with the heavens, with glory. Um, in this icon, he's clothed in a green outer garment, which in the Slavic tradition, when we speak of Ukraine, Russia, Georgia, Bielorussians, uh, green is the color of the Holy Spirit. In the Western churches, mostly, the color red is used to image the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the Eastern churches, many of the Eastern churches, green is a color that images, symbolizes the, Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit as the giver of life. And so St. Joseph, in his role of teaching Jesus here as the worker, he's teaching something to his son. We don't know that Jesus actually became, a, uh, you know, was an apprentice as a carpenter, but it was normal that sons would learn from their father the work that he did in this period of time. And so uh, St. Joseph is inspired by the Holy Spirit to teach and work with his uh, son. I, I want to say goodbye to all of you good people at uh, Central Catholic High School and thank you for the opportunity for us to visit with you here on this machinery and to t tie California and Canada together. It's so wonderful that our two worlds can be working together as friends, as brothers and sisters and also thank you for the opportunity to let the light of St. Joseph and his humble 
service to the Lord and to the Mother of God, let that shine through not only in the icon in your high school, but in your lives, that he would watch over you with his intercession. God bless you all and thank you.